Hi, welcome to the last week of module one. We're really just going to have kind of a, a little chat for this week. I've, I've really covered a lot of the meaty stuff. You've done a whole lot of really hard work for setting these goals, tackling perfectionism, doing your planning. Like that is that is some heavy lifting. So we're going to lighten up a little bit this week. Um, and we're going to talk about something that is going to come up, okay? And that is the need for mental toughness, okay? In our society, we very often get physical toughness and mental toughness confused. Think about marathoners, right? People like, oh, they're so mentally tough to be able to push through that pain. You'll, you'll hear that term a lot, push through, right? Pushing through that pain. Um, when an athlete finishes a game or a competition on a twisted ankle or dislocated something, shoulder, right? It, there was like, oh, so mentally tough to be able to push through that. That is not mental toughness. Is it something to be admired? Like, yeah, that that is something to be admired. It, it shows the dedication to the sport, right? Or, or whatever it is. But it's physical toughness. It's not mental. It's not mental. They're physically tough. They dealt with physical pain. Is there a mental aspect to that? Yeah, sure there is. But that's not mental toughness. Mental toughness is different. And mental toughness is really what you're going to need. Because if we look at the physical toughness aspect of what you're engaging right now, okay, you're going to be engaging workouts that maybe make you feel tired, that maybe make your muscles sore, right? Depending on where you're at physically, you know, if you're just doing the five air squats, maybe you don't feel that so much. If you're doing my workouts and you're choosing the hour long workout, you're probably feeling that, right? I have never had a client quit because what I was asking them to do was too physically hard. Number one, I'm a better trainer than that, right? <laughs> like my goal is not to make you so sore you can't move and my programming reflects that. If for whatever reason you do find that my programming is making you sore for days, please reach out and let me know. It shouldn't be, right? And maybe that particular type of program just isn't for you for whatever reason. Like, don't suffer through that. Like, like seriously, a little bit of soreness is okay. If you're like, I can't brush my teeth, we have a problem. Okay. That should not be how you feel. Okay. Um, anyway, distracted. I've never had someone quit because something was too physically hard. That is not what derails people. What derails people is the other part of that, right? That's where the mental toughness comes in. Because the mental discomfort is not something that we talk a lot about. And it is the self-talk. It's the negative self-talk that derails us. And it's the negative thoughts that we want to believe are true, that we've been taught to believe are true, that cause us problems. So perfect example of this from my life and my world is the snatch. Okay. Like any skill, the snatch is one of the Olympic lifts. It's the fastest lift in the world. You're like from ground to overhead in less than a second. Okay. It is the most technical lift in the world, it is extremely difficult. Okay. And I will tell you, I have had so many times where I have just thought to myself, I'm not good at this. I'll never be good at this. Why am I doing this? I'm just not made for this. I'm just not capable of this. And now as I'm getting older, as I'm for, you know, in my 40s, I'm, I'm 40 now. I turned 40 a couple of weeks ago, a month ago almost, 
Anyway, now I'm starting to say I'm too old, right? And you can transfer that to any skill I'm learning, right? Whether that is working on my handstands, working on my muscle ups, these are all crossfit movements, working on double unders, right? There are so many things that I can say to myself, and I'll be honest that I do. Those thoughts come to me. It's not like I don't have them. I have them all the time, right? Those are the times when I need mental toughness, okay? For you, the thoughts that are going to come up might be things like, I'm not seeing results, This is not a good time for me. I can't tell you how many times that has been the reason that people will stop a program or they'll get to like the end of three months or six months because I do different programs. So like whatever the end of the program is and they'll just be like, it's just not a good time for me to continue. This was too hard, right? I I have young children. I have demanding teenagers. I have a spouse who wants attention or a partner, however, whatever. Um, I want to focus on preparing for kids. My kids just left the house and I am going to pursue something else or I need time to adjust. I'm feeling emotional. Like these are just many, many different examples of, of the mental blocks that people experience, right? It's not now's not a good time. I'm just not made for this. I just can't do this right now. My body can't handle it. These are all thoughts that you are likely to have. I can't fit it into my schedule right now. These are the thoughts. We also have thoughts that can derail us that are less specific. Just thoughts like, I hate my body. My stomach still is gross. I still have a double chin. My time is past. I'll never be beautiful. Right? And that's not specifically tied to your fitness. But it is strong enough that if you let it run away with you, you are likely to stop caring for your body. Fitness, nutrition, whatever it is you're doing, you are less likely to continue caring for a body that you are having those thoughts about. So that's like a huge swath, right, of the different kinds of mental blocks that are going to come up inevitably during this program. And I will be honest, for the rest of your life, no matter how experienced you are, no matter how dedicated you are, thoughts like that are going to come up. There's no end. Will it get better? Will there be fewer of them? My experience is yes, because you learn to think new thoughts. And you you start to believe those thoughts. And so the old ones just kind of go away. Like if I were to think, oh, I don't know. Like I, I never have the thought, I'm weak. I never have that thought. Because I know how incredibly strong I am. I've worked at it for a decade, right? But there was a time where I did have that thought. I don't have that thought anymore though. So the thoughts will change, okay? And you won't have all of the same thoughts hard thoughts forever, but you will always have hard thoughts. Okay. Um, so that's where mental toughness comes in, right? And one of the things that is so hard about this is if you think about your physical toughness side, right? Like your workout, right? You're in your workout, you're tired, your heart's pumping. Um, you probably have some burning in your lungs and your muscles. It's uncomfortable, right? It's uncomfortable. But you also know it's going to end, right? 20, 30 minutes, an hour. It's going to be over. And you're going to bring your heart rate down. You're going to get the lactate out of your muscles. And and you're going to feel good. Chances are you feel better after your workout than you did before. 
Okay, so that's actually pretty easy to get through because you know it's going to be over. And you know it's serving a purpose, right? You know that you're, su you're supposed to feel fatigued during your workout. That's how it works. Okay, so nothing feels broken, really. It's part of the course. You understand what's happening. Okay, and it has an end and you'll feel better later. With the mental blocks, there's no end. You can't say, oh, well, I'm going to stop having this horrible thought about myself in 20 minutes. And then I'll never think it again. That's not how it works. You might dwell on a thought for a week. And you never know when they're coming. It might be in the gym. Might be when you're driving down the road. Might be when you are trying to go to sleep. Might be when you get naked to get in the shower and you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror. Or quite pointedly, look at yourself in the mirror. Those thoughts are much harder to control than the physical. And you also. We also, because me too, so many times when we have those thoughts, we don't understand what's happening. We think it's the truth. Because it, it comes as something that could be. Great example is now's not the time. When is? Like, it's never going to be the time. Or you might think, I'm not getting results. Well, what results are you looking for one month into the program? <laughs> right? Like, and, and can we talk about, like, is that really true? Can you really say that you're not seeing any results? Have you been sticking to the program? Have you been keeping your commitments to yourself? Because those are the results, that's a part of the results we're looking for. So those are tricky because it will so often seem like the truth. And so what we have to do is we have to be able to say, I feel awful. I feel like this isn't working. I feel like I'm not worthy. I feel like I'm not skilled enough. I feel like I'm not young enough. And we have to be comfortable feeling those uncomfortable feelings and having those uncomfortable thoughts and recognizing that number one, it's not true. It's not really true. And number two, that that is part of the journey. I've talked so much about that this journey is not going to feel great. This journey is going to be uncomfortable. Part of what we do in this program is get over those mental blocks. And you're going to get tools and you're going to get information about more, more tools and information about how to deal with that. But for right now, as you move into month two, I want you to be aware because the magic is probably going to start wearing off, right? Do you feel that way? Maybe you don't, and that's fantastic, but maybe you do because you've been doing this a month and you're looking down the road and you're like, oh my God, I have five more months of this. <laughs> okay. And those thoughts are going to start coming in and it's going to get harder and harder to fight them back. Okay. But you have to remember. That it's okay to think them. It doesn't mean you're broken. And it certainly doesn't mean that those thoughts are true. Those are the thoughts that you think when you're having those dark times. And there are a lot of them in the process of change. 
I cannot tell you how many times I have thought I am never going to be a good athlete. I'm never going to get this skill. I will tell you right now. And this is something that only an Olympic lifter or CrossFitter can say is I have an amazing snatch. (laughs) I do. And it took, it took a decade. It took a decade and it took so many dark times and it, like there were so many tears and there were so many times I wanted to throw in the towel. And I will be honest, there were times where I actually did throw in the towel. Like I would just throw my towel and I walked off the platform because I was done. That is part of the process. And those moments and overcoming those thoughts are what make us more formidable human beings at the end of this journey. Okay, it's not body fat loss. That's not that's not what makes you a formidable human. It is getting through those dark times. It is developing that mental toughness. That is when you stand with your back a little bit straighter, when you have been through hell mentally. Is it fun to be able to say you did it physically? Yeah, it is. And it will change you. But it is that mental stuff that really sets you apart. So getting ready to go into month two, I want you to be ready for those thoughts and have some idea of how you want to handle it. And there's a whole unit coming up in a couple months where I'm going to teach you some actual tools for dealing with those thoughts. Okay, But for right now, I want you to write down some thoughts that you can choose to think instead. Now, I wouldn't say you don't want to write something like, my body is amazing because you don't believe it. I mean, maybe you do, but I'm going to guess if you're here, you don't. Or at least you don't think it all the time. I don't. I have body image issues too. I, I mean, like, congratulations to the woman who doesn't growing up in the society we live in. Okay. Don't believe it. You have to believe the thought that you're going to use, right? So maybe, let's see, one of the insidious thoughts you could have is something like, I'm not seeing results. Maybe the counter thought to that is something like, that's not true. I kept a promise to myself and I did my five air squats. That's a result. Because I wasn't doing that before. Right? And you can believe that because you have evidence. You did do that. Right? So that's a thought you can you can believe and that can counter that negative thought. Or maybe it's just something like, that's not true. I'm learning how to keep commitments to myself. Okay? So find the thought that's not like the golden thought. That's like the, the Instagram post thought. Get, get rid of those. That doesn't do anything but make you feel bad about yourself because you know don't you know you don't believe it. Okay. And go for the thought that makes you a little less unhappy, right? The thought you can believe that's true. So spend some time with that. You can even do this little, and I'll teach you this later, but I'll give it to you now. You can do this little exercise where you set a timer for five minutes, you write out the negative thoughts you're having, and then for each of those negative thoughts, write out the counter thought. It's a super easy exercise, max 10 minutes. So if you're being bombarded by a bunch of negative thoughts and you're struggling with mental toughness right now, that's okay. That's something that may help you. The other thing that may help you is, moi, reach out. Let's talk about it. Like, let's coach through that. Because I promise you, (laughs) I've probably had the exact same thought. I'm a human. And I started this journey when I was in my 30s and I was obese and I was suffering from postpartum depression, I was not a collegiate athlete who's always been like in amazing shape. No, no, no. I've been there. I have fought through all of that. And I'm still fighting. So I probably have something that can help you out. Okay. Enjoy this week. Go get it.